mess. Mess mess often is the you know favorite trick that people want to learn. What Boston mess is to the uh, is to the three ball cascade is what Mills mess is to Boston mess is. Let's see what the Boston mess looks like. That's normal three ball cascade. That's the Boston's mess. Do you feel? Do you get a feel for what's happening? What's happening in Boston's mess is unlike in a three ball cascade where the hands are, st hands are staying put and the balls are changing hands, in a Boston's mess, the balls are staying put in vertical columns and the hands are moving between the balls. Yeah, let's have a look at it again. Three ball cascade. So now that we know what a Boston's mess looks like, how do we learn it? Uh, we need to break Boston's mess into six basic steps. There's a slight change in plan now. Uh, what I want you to do is to get a pencil and a sheet of paper. Yeah? Go and get a, a sheet of paper and a pencil and uh, note these things down. What I'm going to do now is to repeat uh, what the six steps are in six different beats of a Boston mess. Take it down and then I'll show you how it's done. The difficulty in advanced stage is it's really difficult to show you step by step how the things are done because a lot of the trick is about doing it when the balls are in motion. So it would be difficult for me to really explain to you what, what needs to be done. So what I would advise is take these six steps down and then listen to what I say. Yeah. Step one, the right hand throws the first ball in the right hand column. The right hand throws the first ball in the right hand column. Step two, the left hand throws in the left column and crosses over the right hand to catch the ball on the right. Yeah, take your time to note. The left hand throws in the left column and crosses over the right hand to catch, his, catch the ball on the right. Step three, the right hand throws under the left wrist into the middle column and moves to catch the left hand ball. Yeah, remember, uh, one thing you need to make a note is that you're starting with two in the right hand and one in the left. Yeah, we've gone up to beat three. Beat four is the left hand throws the ball on the right and moves to the middle column to catch the middle ball. Now all this might sound complicated, but believe me, once I show you how it's done, it's quite simple. You just need to practice and you'll get it. Beat five, the right hand throws the ball on the left, left up, and crosses under the left wrist to catch the ball in the right column. And beat six, the left hand throws the ball in the middle column and moves to catch the ball in the left hand column. So what I would suggest is don't think too much about uh, what I'm saying right now. It might sound a bit complicated. Just make a note of it and uh, let me tell you what needs to be done. Yeah, so let's come back and see what the Boston's mess looks like. And I'll show you the first three steps in Boston's mess. And then on the basis of what I do and what's written, uh, what you've made a note of, you could build on the Boston's mess. Yeah, so the step one is to throw the right, uh, right hand ball in the right hand. Step two is to throw this ball, and step three is to throw this ball. Yeah? One, one, two, and three. One, two, three. I'm not completing the pattern, but what I'm going to do is to show you one, two, three, and four, five, six. Let me, I'll shout out the numbers so that you could uh, go back to the book and see whether you've noted down as four, five, six tallies with what I'm doing, and then complete and learn the, learn the trick yourself. There we go. I need to give you the numbers, yeah? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's the Boston's mess for you. And uh, as you might have noticed, it's an awesome trick to perform in front of audiences. You know, people don't really get a feel for what's happening, but when I tell you, that it's the same pattern as a three ball cascade, except for the fact that the hands are moving instead of the balls. It's, it's really something that you wouldn't have guessed. Let's now move to the next trick, which is the Mills mess. And I'd said earlier, as I'd said earlier, it's the creme de la creme of three ball juggling. And what's a prerequisite for this? It's a three ball cascade and the claw. Just like the Boston's mess, let's, let's first look at what the Mills mess looks like. Mills mess is something like this. You know, hands cross, uh, uncross, and move like this. That's the Mills mess. You know, people when they come to learn juggling, they ask for two things. One th once they master the three ball cascade, 
They say, how do I learn the first uh, football cascade? The next question they ask is, how do I learn the pattern where your hands cross and uncross? That's the mince mess for you. Yeah, now to learning the mince mess. Start with two balls in your right, one in your left. Start with your arms crossed, right hand over your left hand, two balls in your right. And I'm going to do you, and I'm going to tell you three steps. Yeah? One, two, three. What have I done? I've thrown one ball, I've thrown the next ball, and I've thrown this ball this way. So I've thrown three balls, and I've uh, arrived at the reverse position with my left hand over my right, and two balls in my left hand. Have a look at it again. That's half a cycle of the Mills mess. Let's have a look at it again. One, two, three. What you need to do is to repeat the process from your left to the right. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Have a look at it again. Mm -hmm. Left hand over the right hand, two balls in the left hand. One, two, three. Now you've come back to the same position from which you started. All you need to do is to put these two together. Now, this might sound difficult, but once you master the two halves, it's really straightforward for you to mix the two patterns and get the new pattern. Let's have a look. Let me tell you with the numbering. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's as simple as that. Mills mess, if you practice, it doesn't take too much effort, but it's an awesome trick and has an amazing effect on any audience that you perform uh, to. Once we've mastered the Mills mess, let's move to the next one, which is the Burks Barrage. The Burks Barrage is a derivative of two in one hand. As you might have noticed, the prerequisites are two in one hand, three ball cascade, and another hand. Let's look at the Burks Baraj. The Burks Baraj is something like this. What you have is two in one hand going. And what you do is you start with your left hand over your right hand, keep two in one hand going. And if you didn't notice what I did, I go the full circle, come back, and throw it in the extreme most position and I'm left with one ball here, yeah? So all I've done is I've swapped positions. Yeah? Follow me? Let's do it in one hand, I messed it up. Another thing you might have noticed is that it's really important to get the timing right. You know, the time you take to complete the circle and come and throw here is very important because that should be the time when a ball is landing and you're able to make the throw. So let's have a look. That's the reverse. That's where we started. I told you, it's tough. Now try and do it every ball. And that's the box patch. Again, this is, if you do this, people are going to be confused and would never figure out what you're up to. While the trick is all about doing two in one hand and moving the third ball around it. That's the Burks Barrage for you. So we've completed the factory, the Boston mess, the Mills mess, and the Burks Barrage. Now we come to the ultimate in three ball juggling. That's the Rubinstein's Revenge. Now, as I told you, it's really difficult to explain the tricks step by step. All I'm going to try and do, uh, do here is to explain the basic concept in the Rubinstein's Revenge and let you figure it out. Yeah, the Rubinstein Revenge looks something like this. Now, I'm going to definitely drop the balls here. This one is a really difficult trick to master. After you've mastered all these tricks, it takes you a really long time for you to get the Rubinstein's Revenge under control. Here we go. Clueless, that's the Rubinstein's Revenge for you. Now, how do we learn it? It's really difficult for me to explain it, but let me give it a shot. Let's start with two balls, yeah? Let's keep the third ball inside. Now, what you need to do is some kind of an orbit. Let me show you how. Let me just remember. Yeah. You throw this ball, and you let the other ball orbit around it. Say I'm starting with the green ball on my right and the red ball on my left. But when I do finish the first step, 
I'm going to end up with the balls exchanging positions. Have a look. Green, red on my right. Green on my right. So that's one thing you need to get used to. You know, it takes a really long time. This might sound simple, but when you start doing it, the ball goes in all over the all over the place. Yeah. If you master this, go to the other side. Unlike the other tricks, there's a lot of you know heavy duty movement going, and hence, if you miss the ball, the ball's going to hit some some shelf or destroy some glass in the house. So just be a bit careful about where you do this trick. Step one. Step one. Let's do it the other way. I dropped it. Let's work with the other ball. Step one. Now, if you look at the Rubinstein's revenge, what exactly happens is that when you have two balls doing this, the third ball is just going in the extreme corner of the pattern. Now, it's really difficult to notice this, but if you have an eye for how the three balls are behaving, notice for one ball going at the extreme left and the same ball going to the extreme right. Let's have a look at the Rubinstein's image and watch out for the ball going to the extreme corners. Here it's the green ball. Notice the green ball. So that's the Rubinstein's revenge for you. Try to understand the first steps and try to look at the last ball and try to figure out the pattern yourself. Uh, what I would also suggest is go to the internet and check out a few sites which describe the Rubinstein's revenge. And based on this video and what you download from the sites, you must be able to figure it out. It's not so hard, but it requires a lot of practice.